gem is truly outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. <laughs> That's all you got? <laughs> I'm not doing the entire damn theme song to Jem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had to pick Jem, did you? Well, I figured wow. since, the, since the recent movie bombed the hell out of itself. <laughs> uh, somebody's got to give some gem love, I guess, right? Exactly. It, it, what I got is Yo Joe, he'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. A real American hero. It's G.I. Joe against Cobra the Enemy, yep. fighting to save the day. He never gives up, he's oh, always yeah. there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe. A real American hero. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is a code name for America's <laughs> daring, oh, highly gee. trained special <laughs> okay, mission you're doing force. The entire thing. <laughs> its purpose to defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. He never gives up. He'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. G.I. Joe. Suddenly I feel better about myself. <laughs> I, I looked that one up. <laughs> to, wow. Come on, man. Not even from memory? No, I don't have that one from memory. All right. Let's, okay. Let me but, try but it's stuff. so hard to do that without going, G.I. Joe. Oh, totally. <laughs> it's like if I did, like, wings of silver, nerves of steel, silver hawks, partly metal, partly real. Silverhawks, soaring through the highway of the heavens in their prime. Silverhawks, a rainbow in the night. <laughs> Wings of silver, nerves of steel. Silverhawks, partly metal, partly real. Silverhawks, silverhawks. You know, it, it almost sounds like you're reading poetry to us. <laughs> no. Thank you. It was a piece of fun, don't you know? Is this... <laughs> We're recording, right? We are. <laughs> oh, God, we're recording? Yes. <laughs> of course we are. Hello, I'm not right. from your country. I, I, I do not know. But... <laughs> uh, Matt, did I you mean... want to give one a shot? or are you? Uh... Oh, I'll try one. I just looked one up. Okay. Peer pressure. Dashing and daring, courageous and caring, faithful and friendly, with stories to share. All through the forest, they sing out in chorus, marching along as their song fills the air. Gummy bears. <laughs> Bouncing here and there and everywhere. High adventure, that's beyond compare. They are the gummy bears. Reach. Give me sight beyond sight! Greetings, Starfighter. You are about to listen to the totally super awesome 80s Reboot Overdrive podcast. Always remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Ready Player One. Welcome everyone to another episode of 80s Reboot Overdrive. Today, we want you to get yourself positioned in front of the television, have your little pillow from the couch and laying in front with your big bowl of Fruity Pebbles cereal because today we're talking about 80s cartoons. Yep. Uh, so I am on, I'm Dave, and on with me today I've got Matt. By the power of Grey Skull. It's good to oh. be here. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't know we were going to be doing that kind of intro. I, I ruined it. Okay, Nick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, of course, Thundercats. So, so Nick, we didn't really get a chance to discuss this before we started, but I'm wondering, is Thundercats off the table, or are we allowed to talk about it? Well, I think that we've really, we've really plumbed the Thundercats well. I mean, we we went straight to the source, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We did. So, you know, having that talk with Larry Kenny really kind of gave us a lot of insight around uh, Thundercats, so we did dig deep into that, um, but I didn't know if it was, you know, we're not allowed to talk about it because of that now. 
Oh, I mean, we could always mention it, but we probably shouldn't devote a whole lot of time to it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, After okay. All, there were several thousand cartoons TV we created every year of the 80s, so yeah. Oh, there were a lot of 80s cartoons to talk about. All right, so what we got to do is we're going through, and each one of our co-hosts is bringing to the table three car- 80s cartoons that they want to talk about. Uh, so we're not necessarily calling this our top three, or maybe they are, uh, but just something that we've got something to share about. Um, so obviously, Nick and I have a little background with the Thundercats thing since we had our interview with Larry Kenny, and we just continue to plug that episode because we're just so, I don't know, damn proud of you know being able to talk to the Lord of the Thundercats. Well, you know, we're also inveterate you know fanboys, so. Oh, we are. Definitely go back, check that episode out if you have not already. You know, just took our opportunity to talk through, you know, Thundercats at length now. Just uh, let, let us get started. And uh, Nick, I want you to give us your first pick. And we're not we're not going chronologically, are we? No, no. Whatever order you want to give it. All right. Let's see. And I think for my first pick, I will do something that's a little not as super famous, but Definitely, if you would see it, you would never forget it. The greatness that was the Mr. T animated show, where Mr. T was, traveled around with a group of young gymnastics students and their teacher, uh, solving mysteries wherever they uh, should come across. And got to remember, it's um, diverse students. Oh, very diverse students. <laughs> Just a veritable UN of students. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, as awesome as that part was, and if you've ever watched the intro to that series and you get to see such wonders as, you know, Mr. T, you know, you know, destroying groups of guys, they, uh, the gymnastic students flipping their way out of danger, and Mr. T, you know, grabbing a crocodile by the tail and swinging it around in the air. Personally, yeah. I always was a fan of the live action parts at the beginning and end. So was was this a favorite of yours? <laughs> well, let me put it this way: I, I remembered it as a kid. I remember, like, for those of you who are, you know, didn't grow up in the eighties and nineties, the USA Network uh, used to be a lot uh, looser with its programming. And in the mornings and on the weekends, they used to have something called Cartoon Express. Either of you remember that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mr. T was one of those syndicated cartoons that could be showed on, like different cartoon blocks, but that was the one that, that I, I always saw it on. And as a kid, it was just something to kill time to, but then, I don't know, seven years ago, Adult Swim or Cartoon Network, for whatever reason, just put reruns of that thing on for grids. And oh, God. It was yeah, glorious. It was, a, it was glorious. It was a cross-promotion. Yep. I forgot how just insane that show was from concept to execution. It did teach me how Mr. T introduced himself. The name's Mr. T. First name Mr. Middle name's that period. Last name T. So I pity the fool that didn't watch this cartoon. Oh no, actually I I, I gotta say, I, I don't pity any fools that missed this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably better people for it, but oh wow, was it a fun show. Yo, know, I I just don't know where we go from Mr. T, so Matt, what do you got? <laughs> Um, well, if anybody pays attention to what I like on this podcast, it's obvious that I like science fiction a lot. And the one cartoon that I remember just religiously watching every Saturday morning was Space Stars, which was an hour-long cartoon. And it had all the great Warner Brothers characters, like Space Ghost and Herculoids, Teen Force... Had that mean, creepy monkey. You mean Hanna Barbera? Yeah, Hanna Barbera. What did I say? You said Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, Hanna Barbera, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are people that would tear you apart for saying that, but yes. Yeah, I, and I, Jetson's uh, dog. Jetson's dog, Astro and the Space Mutts. Wow. <laughs> That's, wow. Now, now, was it like one of those rotating programs where it would show different Yeah, it was. Re- it would be like a space ghost story, then a Herculoids, then a Teen Force, and somewhere in there there'd be like little shorts of 
Astro and the Space Muts. Give you comic relief, I guess. Because, you know, Astro, he had screen presence. He could carry his own segments. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then they teamed up, too, so they all crossed over with each other. Like Space No, Ghost really? That's teamed awful. up with Herculoids and... <laughs> I think wow. the last episode, they all te- they all teamed up on the last episode. Because the Hercules, that's bizarre. That that that's bizarre. Because like, yeah, the Hercules wasn't that post-apocalyptic. Sort of. Well, they were on a different planet. They don't explain why there's humans on this other planet. <laughs> they just assume, ah, oh, there's humans here. Like they're always. But really, they're on the planet Quasar. And you know, they have space oh, ghosts yes, fighting yeah. like like space sharks and. <laughs> All sorts of weird things. You know, if if space really was that interesting, I don't even think we'd be really want to go there because it's kind of scary. Space sharks. We got Earth yeah, sharks that are scary enough, you know. But Teen Force had a scary villain. It had like this monkey kind of flying monkey thing. It looked like Dark Side shot eye beams out of his eyes. Oh, I think he's called yeah. But flying monkeys oh, are really scary. All you got to do is watch um, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, so, yeah. Like that Altor, <laughs> Altor. I think it's Altor. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the picture. I remember these things now. They um, what was the the rhino looking thing? Bullets out of its horn. Oh, Tundro, Tundro. Here we go. Yeah, gloop and gleep, little blobs. On the Herculoids. Herculoids were awesome. They just had all sorts of little... They had a yeah. flying dragon. and Oh, God, I remember Gloop and Gleep. I remember how they communicated. That was so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it made no sense, either. It was just well, like, just throw everything, everything in there. Head of Barbaros. Yeah, Head of Barbaros was sort of the bouillabaisse of concepts. You know, they would just take three different things and make a show out of it. So, so now this was on 81 to 82. So were you watching it when it first aired? Oh, yeah. I was there every Saturday morning. All right. Very With cool. My, my cereal, getting ready for Space Ghost. <laughs> I used to run around the house pretending I was Space Ghost. What was the cereal of choice? You don't Probably remember? Probably Captain Crunch. Captain Probably Crunch. Captain Crunch. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, what was your like Saturday morning ritual? Because I know what I always did. I'd get up at like 6 a.m. because... I was a kid who had the ability to do that on a Saturday. And I'd, you know, go down the stairs before anyone was up. You know, the house would be dark and, you know, lights were off. And, yeah, I would just go, go run into the kitchen one time. I remember I couldn't even reach the cereal. So I just ended up getting an entire container of whipped cream and, uh, <laughs> and eating it in front of my, you know, like, just sitting Indian style and eating that, that, just watching TV. I don't know if it was what was, it was like for you guys, but... The usual cartoon blocks like that the networks did didn't come on right away. They would come on at like eight thirty, nine o'clock. But if you were up yeah. early enough, you would see some really weird syndicated stuff. Like kitschy local cartoons or like local T V shows or something. We're on at like just this dead zone hour before you got to the cartoons. And actually that was a more like that was actually more interesting to me as I got older, just because you would just see some just really strange stuff. Yeah, I don't and recall guys... getting up too much earlier. I mean, I, I I remember getting up just in time for the cartoons, and of course I got you know the Schoolhouse Rock going and all that. Yep. And uh, but you know, for me it was uh, Fruity Pebbles. That was my uh, you know that was my poison. You know, and as I described it, you know, I would pull the uh, um, the pillow from the couch put it in front of the TV a few feet and that was where I was at for the next few hours, you know, and, and just enjoying, mm-hmm. you know, enjoying the cartoons. Yeah. I remember reading the comic books like every, I don't know, summer they'd have a double spread in the comic books announcing the new cartoons for fall. <laughs> then I'd have to plan out my schedule, like which cartoon I'm going to watch <laughs> at which time. I remember for a little while, they would do, at least on certain networks, they would do, like, special previews of the new cartoons, like little mini pilots. And I, I remember on ABC that they worked it into TGIF. It was like a TGIF special where it was like the TGIF show stars talking about the new cartoons. Yeah. 
Yeah, whenever that too. Yeah, whenever they could throw in like a you know a, a really you know like a superstar or whatever, like a Hulk Hogan or something like that, right? They would. We're gonna Bob Saget, you know, just yeah, you know, something to kind of put some star power around. You know, here's what's coming up. You know, I can't remember. Was the blocks were like, were they like nine to noon or nine to one, or eight to eight to one? Just because it was all a yeah, long something time. like that. For a network to have cartoons on, I'm amazed it lasted yeah. as long as it did. I mean, it doesn't do it now, obviously, but no, because we didn't have Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or any of that. We just had, you or know, the internet, TV yeah. over the antenna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just had TV on the old antenna. Yeah, kids nowadays they can just turn cartoons on whenever. Seriously, you know, turn on on demand. They didn't have it like us where we were rough and we had to only have it for three hours of the day. And so I hope you got it. You missed the Saturday morning show. They weren't going to show it during the week. No, of course not. You had to wait till they reread that. Hey, we we still grew up in the. Do you guys ever watch Bozo? Bozo. Bozo. Oh yes. It was not syndicated in my area, but I knew kids who do watch Bozo. Yeah. Yeah, we had the great joy of actually having a host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's people hosting our cartoons <laughs> that was something that was like dying out even when i was a kid like yeah they're just like a, a block of fun stuff yeah all together by yeah bozo the clown or whoever else all right well i think i should throw my first pick out and i want to talk about visionaries knights of the magical light there you go yes and, and the reason why i think i kind of got I gravitated towards these guys is not only because the toy was cool because you had you know knights but you also had holograms so yep. you put those together that was just totally cool but then you know somebody decided you know let's make a cartoon about that and then it really you know appealed to the dungeons and dragons geeky kid that I was oh you know, really I, yeah and and so that really helped it you know because you know i i was into the reading the hobbit and reading uh you know or you know getting into dungeons and dragons and spending a lot of times playing ultima 2 on my apple 2e so there's really a lot of segue into that kind of cartoon that was the visionaries and yeah. there was nothing bad about it for me oh boy you just opened up a cat of our worms man you mentioned ultima <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Ultima Two on my Apple IIe, yes. Revenge of the Enchantress. Yes, yes, yes. What a great, great game. But uh, yeah, the cartoon. I, you know, it mm-hmm. sure it was based on the Hasbro toy, uh, which, you know, I'm sure they were trying to mimic what was going on with Transformers. Yep. But you know, and. and they weren't able to get that same lightning and bottle as they, you know, as Transformers executed. Yeah. But still, I still think that, you know, for me, uh, you know, the hologram thing where the the knights turn into these animal totems, mm-hmm. you know, if only for a short period of time, yeah. uh, you know, on this. They gain, the, gain the power of it, right? Like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where they could fly like an eagle or they were a lion or a bear or whatever it was. Um, and, you know, even the, the whole concept around that their powers could get used up and they had to, like, perform these missions for this magician named Merklin in order to recharge their magic. <laughs> yeah, it was genius. Yeah. Just absolutely genius. So for me, yeah, this cartoon could do no wrong for me. And the concept was cool. Like, didn't it say at the beginning, like, the, sh- it, the shift happened so science doesn't work anymore? It's all magic now? Right, right. Technology had failed them, yep. and they had to rely on magic. Yep. And like there was even like vehicles. So think of like GI Joe vehicles, you know. But in this case, they're powered by magic. But only certain knights had the power to run them. Yep. I mean, yeah, just good stuff. Uh, I'm sure Matt, you, you're you're probably a big Visionaries fan, right? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I, say I was. <laughs> no. But what's what's weird about the um just quick little segue like weird about shows in the 80s and i mean to the 90s and to a lesser extent now but definitely in the 80s um that they would develop toy concepts first and then if they sold decently or if it seemed like they would sell decently they would develop an entire show around it it wasn't 
the other way around. Like, the figures didn't come out after the show. The show came out for the figures. Right. Because they did that with He-Man. Um, if you, I don't know if you ever remember, like, the earliest He-Man figures. He he didn't have his, like, backstory. He didn't have his, like, uh, Prince Adam thing. He had his, like, but he had a little, he was like a barbarian. And the only thing he had was Castle Grayskull. And Skeletor was from a race of interdimensional skeleton people. Yep. And, um, and I guess and then, star is Superman. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! I just remembered that. <laughs> Somehow we ended up in the DC universe. Yeah. DC was hired to do the backstory. Yeah. Similar to the way Marvel was hired to do the backstory for Transformers and yep. G.I. Joe. And, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and, and then like when the show came out, they redid the entire backstory. Yep. Because it was filmation and they couldn't use DC's ideas. <laughs> yep. So now He Man was pitted against Superman? Yeah, the first first story was He Man. They had those little mini comics. And I think they had a, a mini comic within to introduce He Man to the world. It was like a comic within a comic. It had Superman going to... I don't even think they called it Eternia. I don't remember. Just Superman's world, or He-Man's world. Yeah. And then somehow, of course, you know, two heroes fight and He-Man could take on Superman. <laughs> so I was hooked right there. <laughs> and actually, there was a, there's a canon reason for that. Uh, Superman is weak to magic, so... Yep. And, and He-Man's all about the magic, so there you go. So then He-Man won? At first. Oh, okay. At first. Then they realized that they that they were not so different, and they took on evil. Yep. So. yep. Oh, then they team up. Okay. Yep. Like every yeah, hero does, usually meets another hero. Right. Exactly. Okay. Gotta First, fight. I'm going to fight you, <laughs> and then one of us is going to kind of win, and then then it'll be a wait. Hold on. We should team up and do things together. So. Exactly. Right. I think it was drawn by Kurt Swan, but I'm not positive. Nice. So I would have to look that up. But yeah, that was the first story-wise of He-Man. And then there was little... I'm pretty sure there was little comic books in the back of each figure. Mm-hmm. If I yep. remember. I remember those little mini-comics that yep. were easy to lose because they were tidy. Yep. So kind of like the accessories for my uh, Empire Strikes Back's action figures. Oh, yeah. 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 All those guns, they're just gone. Yep. All right. All right. So, Nick, next pick. Next pick, okay. Well, this might seem like an easy one, but this is one of the first cartoons I ever remember totally fanboying over and to, like, getting mad if I missed an episode, and that was the real Ghostbusters. Awesome pick. It And everyone knows why they were called the real Ghostbusters, right? Well, yeah, because they had that other Ghostbusters... The, the uh, Filmation Ghostbusters. Yeah, the Filmation yeah. one, right? Yeah. The one with the monkey. Yep. Yeah, and, which is actually an old 60s or 70s sitcom. 60s, yeah, or yeah, yeah, it was like a movie. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a movie. And there was a whole big rights issue d- during the filming of Ghostbusters, the movie that they had to clear up. But yeah, that's why they ended up like thumbing their nose at them. But it also was cool. I think they called them the real Ghostbusters because, in addition to the first episode, conti- like part of it continued after the first movie. It shows them coming back to the firehouse and covered in marsh- and, uh, marshmallow goop is that in a later episode they get something in the mail about they want to make a movie about them and it, it shows like Peter, Ray, Egon and Winston reading the casting choices it's like it's like um, what they, they say Murray, Aykroyd and Ramis sounds like a law firm yeah <laughs> so in universe they were the real Ghostbusters to the movie to the movie characters you know that we know it was also really well written. I don't know if anyone, uh, if whoever watched it here, knew like they actually put some thought into well, at least in the early episodes, put some thought like what the ghosts were, and actually like gave backstories to them. So did yeah. they did they ever explain why Slimer became like their mascot? Yes, in like one of the first episodes, they um they found him just around the firehouse, and they wanted to bust him, but. What was it? No, he, he he escaped. He escaped, and they wanted to bust him. But then their old uniforms, like the ones that all had one color, and it also explained why they had different color uniforms. Yeah. They, they got new uniforms, 
And the uniforms that were covered with the mushroom glop had, like, this weird ectoplasm resonance and became, like, evil, mindless spirit ghostbusters that tried to kill them. And Slimer ended up helping them bust that, uh, bust them, and they kept them on as a pet. And how did I remember that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you recalled all that from memory. Nice. Well, I, I, they, they might have had a. They might have had it on YouTube. I I don't remember. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's also one episode that I I didn't appreciate at the time, but now I totally do, where they actually reference Cthulhu. And uh, the Lovecraft, the uh, Cthulhu Mythos and Lovecraft. And they actually almost lost against him, which was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, you know, who was one of the main writers of that show, don't you? Uh, J. Michael Straczynski, right? Yep. yep. Babylon 5. Yep. Oscar nominee. <laughs> yep, seriously. <laughs> That's quality, man. Well, I know recently on the 80s reboot, Overdrive Facebook page. I had put the. They redid the beginning intro part of that, and they made it like into. It looked like a 3D type yeah, of look. I remember that. Yeah, you, yeah, I yeah. saw that. It was pretty cool looking. Yeah, and they did a really great job of you know making it as close as to the original, but with a 3D look, and mm-hmm. it was like very cool. So Matt, next pick. Well, we've already talked about my next pick. Was he man? Oh <laughs> man, well, we didn't actually talk about it. Let's go go further. What? I don't know, but I, you know, after reading that that Superman comic book, I got obsessed with He Man, and I bought a ton of He Man toys, and I just dug everything about He Man, everything about you know the whole mystical thing. Because, like Tim, I was getting into science fiction and fantasy stuff, and it seemed to be a meld of both science fiction and fantasy so i used to rush home and watch he-man and those first couple episodes were they're okay there's a lot of (laughs) stupid humor in those things that are just like (laughs) like one of those stupid jokes are like he-man and um or adam and the hell is the cat's name cringer yeah walk into a bar for some odd reason, they walk into a bar. <laughs> it's like, That's a why are they joke. walking into a bar? And they're carrying on a conversation. The bartender goes, your cat talks? <laughs> <laughs> I think Adam's line is something along the lines of like, well, doesn't everybody? Yeah. And I like the bartender apparently doesn't recognize the prince of the, of the kingdom. Yeah. And I just love those pink shirts. <laughs> yeah, they get these pink, these pink spike vest, like where the shoulders just flare out there. Uh, so, did you have a lot of the toys though? Um, because those toys were awesome. Oh, I had tons of those toys. I knew a kid I who had. Have, to, uh, I didn't have Castle Grayskull. That was my only. That my I'm, only regret. I I knew one person who had Castle Grayskull set, and I was so jealous because that was a pretty cool, cool, cool thing. But did you have like the battle damage Skeletor? Yep, I had the Battle Damage Skeletor, a couple of versions, I can't remember all the versions of He-Man. Uh, Mana Faces, I love Mana Faces. Yep. Did you ever have the Mothman figure? No, didn't have the Mothman. <laughs> I remember was, him, though. He had, like, the figure had this weird texture where it was, it was yeah. kind of very short, like, hair or, you know, roughness. And you could get him wet and it would, t- it would feel mossy and cool. But then the figure would spell terrible. Yeah. <laughs> he had a ton of weird things. It seemed the like. Man, the the, the, yeah. the spring loaded legs. <laughs> yep. And then there was, of course, the ever popular Fisto, which led to no end of jokes when my, back in college when my friends and I would talk about this sort of thing. But that's that's eighties reboot after dark right there. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't say that I had a single He Man character. But I I, I was you know GI Joe and you know like I said uh, Visionaries and Thundercats. So I had all those guys. But yeah, I didn't collect any He Man. But He Man the cartoon when it was on it was syndicated it was shown monday through friday and it was always after school so i'd rush home and watch an episode of he-man it would be a new episode every day i was so it was like 
golden age or something because it never <laughs> happened before. No, we were all stuck in Saturdays. Yep. You have to wait all week for a new cartoon, but now suddenly there's a cartoon every day. Obviously, this didn't hold true for every character, but I loved that the average He-Man naming scheme was actually very simple. You took the yeah. concept of what someone was, and then you added O-R to the end of their name. Or just, like, split their name up into, like, different segments to make it sound alien. Like, Manny Faces. Or, <laughs> or, um, or Stinkor. The, the, yeah. the mutant skunk villain. Yeah, it's I had like, Stinkor. He smelled. <laughs> so, so then if we were He-Man characters, it would be Nickor, Mador, and Davor? Or, like, we wanted to do something cool, like, I'd be like, I don't know, Wheelor. Or <laughs> Nostaljor. <laughs> Skeletor. Skeletor had the best voice ever. Yeah, Skeletor had the greatest voice ever. I'll you catch you, me, man. man. He always made fun of all his little henchmen, yep. too, which I always thought was funny. That was the tried true 80s com- uh, you know, 80s trope of this evil, vile villain with the single stupidest uh, crew. Yes. That- <laughs> And he would always just get angry as all get out when they failed, even though it was clear that they did not have a functioning brain cell between them. Well, that leads back to the 1980s movie discussion where I was bringing up, uh, why does Lex Luthor have, um, what's his name? Otis, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean, was that the theme of the 80s? You know, I'm going to have that bumbling henchman, even though I'm a really smart, evil guy? For for whatever reason... they didn't like showing the villains being too effective. Uh, right. Like, like you you have to, like, make it so that there'd be a reason that the hero wouldn't just up and kill them right there, I guess, if they, if they were too effective. I remember actually liking it when it occasionally, like, when they, the villain actually looked like he was actually going to win for once. Right. I was like, oh, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. All right, let's do this. And then, like, right at the last minute, they would just pull the rug out from it. I was just like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Lex Luthor, I mean, Lex Luthor beat Superman in the movie. Oh, he, he did, yeah. <laughs> he totally had him beat until the little lady came in and rescued Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. You don't say it's like you, man. You can... So, my next pick, going back to cartoons, even though we could go back to Superman. No, my next pick is actually one that wasn't really, I guess, that awesome of a cartoon. But for some reason, it kind of did it for me. Because it melded music videos and cartoons. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking kid video. Oh my god. So, I mean... The single most 80s thing ever made in the 80s. <laughs> Here's what happened. Last night, I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to be talking about this cartoon. So I actually bring it up on YouTube. And my youngest daughter and I actually sit down and watch the first episode of kid video. So we are watching um, this episode called To Beat the Band. And, wow, it just does not transcend well to, you know, <laughs> I 2015. I would but, imagine not, no. <laughs> but but here, here's what happened during episode one. It was really kind of funny. Um, you know, they, they get turned into a cart, you know, they get brought in through the uh, mirror yep. into... The flip side. The flip side, thank you, you know, by Master Blaster. Blaster. In ep- episode one, they, they're going to this place called Neon City. And they Neon City, all the residents have had the clock sped up by Master Blaster because there's this band that he has that is called the Copycats. And what they do is they capture an artist. And if I remember right, the premise of each episode is they have a different artist that the Master Blaster has captured. And it gives them the proper ability to show like a video segment during the episode. And this specific yeah. one, it was Lionel Richie. <laughs> so it was really, you know, all night long, you know, that video came oh up you know, during, yeah. the, during, the, during that specific sequence. So, yeah. you know, there's like a little blurb where they're looking in this bubble where the, you know, Lionel Richie is captured. And then, you know, here's that the video all night long. So it's not like Lionel Richie really knows he's captured. No. 
but it's just a video of him dancing around during his song. Um, but yeah, it was just really kind of comical um, because, you know, now the copycats, Master Blaster wants all these people of Neon City to be watching and enjoying or, you know, being fans of uh, the copycats. So his plan is that he sped up all these people so that they're the only way he, he says you're going to get back to normal is if you go to this concert. So everybody goes to this concert, but then his big master plan is at once they're all there, he's going to slow it down so the concert never ends. Hmm. I'm like, wow, who thinks of this? <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, so, so, yeah, that's the whole premise. And then the gang that is Kid Video and his band, you know, they're there to save the residents of Neon City during this whole problem, you know. And it's really kind of comical, but at the same time, it really doesn't transcend well to 2015. <laughs> no, and I was looking at <laughs> the shots as you were talking because I was trying to remember. And yeah, then and I remember the the fairy yeah. glitter. With, Glitter, yes. With a headband, uh, spandex, and leg warmers. And so she would have to sneeze in order to get super strength yep. for a few moments. And then it would dissipate. But she but she was even more 80s. Like, that was the 80s cherry on the 80s Sunday that was Kid Video. Yes, because uh, she had the leg warmers on, yeah, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. She looked like, she looked like um, Olivia Newton-John and Let's Get Physical. Yes, 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 yes. I only watched it for the live sequence. I like the keyboardist. <laughs> and you're, oh, you're right. At the end of the at the end of the episode, there was, uh, you know, their own video. Not in this case, it wasn't like the Lionel Richie video, but it was like a kid video video. Yeah. And you know, in this case, there was a song called um, I want to say it was TLC, and you know, it's predominant around the the uh, the drummer. You're talking about the female drummer. Oh, um, the drummer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, and yeah, that was really uh, yeah. She she's not uh, hard on the eyes, so I'm agreeing but with it you. Also, also had um, cousin Oliver from the Robbie Brady Wrist. Wrist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Robbie Wrist, yes. So yeah, that is my little discussion on kid video. Um, so before we get too deep into that one, let's go on to Nick's next pick. Now we're on number, I'm on number three, right? You're on number three. Well, this was a tough one because there's, you know, 18 million different things to choose from. Um, but I wanted to go a little outside the box because this is one of the first shows I remember actually having a fairly intricate and serious plot that I didn't appreciate at the time, but, um, I still liked it. But then when I watched the reruns when I was older... I was amazed that it last that it was as cool as it was. Uh, the mysterious cities of gold. That was very a very unique uh, concept for the time. It was a Japanese French animated co production where it was set in the sixteenth fifteenth uh, or sixteenth century, and it was about uh, this uh, young Spanish boy Esteban who finds out. I'm just trying to I'm trying to summarize the plot, but basically. He and his friends and a conquistador who saved his life when he was a baby named Mendoza. It had a lot of it. A lot of it was based off of um, like Central American mythology, and it was talking about uh, El Dorado and just all that, all the different uh, things that go along with it. But it was actually pretty. It had its lighthearted kid moments, but it was actually pretty um, detailed, and it actually went for. A reasonable level of historical accuracy, although there were fantastic elements like a giant, like eagle jet vehicle that they would use to get around. That's what it was. The ancient tribe, the Olmecs, supposedly had this hyper advanced technology that um, was like super, like very science fiction, but it was set in the era of exploration with the new world and everything. And one of the main quests was trying to find Esteban's uh, father, who you end up finding out at the last episode because they uh, it had they were just going to do another season, but it got cut off where he was like the priest of the first uh, city of gold that they found, and then they have to find other ones, and they're all around the world. And they actually made a sequel series 
20 years later, just a couple of years ago, they actually came out with the long-awaited, uh, long-awaited sequel series, and it picks up right where the other series left off. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I thought it, I thought that was pretty neat, and it was set in China, but it was still about finding these ancient cities of gold and this ancient lost technology. Very cool. Yeah, I, I don't recall ever watching it, though. Yep. And any 80s Reboot fans that follow us on Twitter, I am so sorry for botching the entire description of that show. It's... It's just really, really cool, and if you haven't seen it, just check it out. <laughs> All right, so Matt, your third pick. Well, you probably already know which I'm going to pick, because it's the first serious cartoon that I ever watched that I ever saw on TV, and it was aired after school. It's similar to Mysterious Cities of Gold, since it's a, an American import of a Japanese cartoon, mm-hmm. and that was Robotech. There you go. And this show just blew me away because by the time I saw Robotech, I had already been knee deep in more serious literature, I guess. Mm. So I wanted something a little bit more oomph to my cartoons. And I wanted to see consequences of things happening. So <laughs> right in the first episode, they pretty much People die. blow up the little I- island and <laughs> ship everybody off into space no apparent reason and then from there it just gets worse and worse and worse for everybody <laughs> and it was actually people based off start of three dying series. yep it was based on three different series wasn't it yeah oh, i had three different together. series in it, but i'm pretty much just a fan of the first series well it was like they, the, they mixed they mixed and matched three different japanese series to create robotech but yeah the first yeah. one was based off of macross and that was uh yeah for the for the eighties and for showing that on American TV, that was quite surprising. I think parents got surprising. up in arms actually. It's very surprising. And the God, why can't I remember what the aliens were? The Zentradi. Zentradi, yeah. They all got bent out of shape because Min May would start singing. <laughs> yes. Oh God, Min May. <laughs> they have culture. <laughs> they have culture. <laughs> you can watch you can watch Robotech and you can see, you know, World War Two influences throughout the whole thing. Oh, totally. Like you look at something like Robotech and then you look at something like G.I. Joe where no matter what, if someone was at a flying vehicle, they yep. didn't know what was gonna happen, but they got hit by a laser and blew up, even if they had no forewarning, you would always just see a little tiny parachute just flying away from the away yep. from the wreckage. Just, Everybody's shooting their little razor guns and nobody hits anything. <laughs> yep. But then when you actually see something on American TV, on, Amer- on an animated show where people die as a kid, that just blows your mind. Yeah, it blew my mind. I was like, wait, he's dead? <laughs> you no. <mean> he's dead? <laughs> Things don't die. <laughs> he's like my favorite character through the entire show and then suddenly he's like, Halfway through the sh- through the series, he's dead. I'm like going, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> this isn't right. This doesn't happen. <laughs> Nobody dies. So it's ca- so it kind of like what the Walking Dead of cartoons. Is that what's happening? Yeah, happened? sort Short of. Time, yes. Not quite that much death, but right. Roy Folker died, and then I think yep. the next episode, one of Rick's pilots died. Yep. It's like back to back. There wasn't that much death, but then there, then at the end of the show, I think everybody died, except for like three people. As you do. And a love triangle. had a love triangle, too. Which is unusual for uh, kids yeah. from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I know that you had brought this up as kind of like something that we should like watch and podcast about. Yeah. It's a bizarre show, because really, I don't even know if the Japanese show made that much sense and i think it took an american writer to actually make it make sense well it um because i watched the macros and i'm like what the hell is going on <laughs> well because macros the original macros was confined to a very short story but then when it came to america they would just mix up all the the like the two other shows to stretch yeah. it out they had to like write around it i should probably go to my third pick and Mine is not actually one that I am going to be saying nice things about. Go for it. Here's one that I just don't completely understand at all. 
and I, 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 I really, whoever decided to put this together, you know, I, I, I understand it was the eighties and I understand that just because there was some sort of big marketing to do about some sort of product that you thought, you know, Hey, let's put a cartoon out, but really Rubik, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. People. I do not get it. I was hoping to God one of you would mention Rubik's Amazing Cube. <laughs> so, um, I, I, for those of you that watched it and love this cartoon, I, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. I don't understand why somebody would look at that and go, okay, it's a puzzle cube that you've got to put the colors together. And, you know, it got uber popular in the 80s. I get it. But why did somebody say, Let's throw that into a cartoon. I guess they made a cartoon of anything in the 80s. I, I get that, right? Yeah. But, I mean, it's a puzzle. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and then when they solved the puzzle on the show, Rubik came to life and he had this unsettling alien face. Yeah, I know, but... His uh, face wasn't even based off of like the colors of the cube. He, he, like, he, he grew a face at legs. Uh, okay, so, yeah. I mean, we, we had... Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. We yeah. had uh, um, Pac Man, you know, the cartoon. We even had Fonzie in a cartoon. Mm -hmm. You know, I, but Rubik? I, I, I don't know. That just, I don't get that. I really don't. And, you know, whoever decided, you know, the marketing genius that said, you know what, we need to throw this into a cartoon, I, I whatever you were smoking that day, dude. <laughs> we want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got to share. Um, but yeah, that's my my rant. I, I you know I may have watched an episode or two, and, and I know there was something to do with you know some sort of gypsy thing going on. I I, I, I barely remember uh, it, but yeah, it was had, it's not good. He had some magical powers and helped the kids get out of jams. Right. That's right. all I remember. <laughs> no. This I think it leads into a very interesting question. Because they made anything into a cartoon in the 80s, name something that you feel got so far off its original concept. Because there were a few. Can you think of any cartoons that did that? Because I get a few in my head. They got so far off their original concept. Because in order to be made into a cartoon, they, they added these weird, fantastical elements. G give me a for an example. Well, okay, uh... man, um... Punky Gary Brewster. Coleman. <laughs> yep, okay. Gary Coleman. Okay, okay, okay. Punky Brewster. All right, I heard you guys. Yeah. With, uh, with Glomer, the the leprechaun gopher that granted her wishes. Because oh hell, they killed Gary Coleman. <laughs> yeah, he was an angel. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. They killed him off. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, I alluded to it, but Fonzie was in a traveling, like a time a, traveling a time thing. Machine, yeah. Yeah. With an intro by I Wolf mean, Dead, how bizarre yeah. was it? How bizarre is it to have your main character die? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> look, this is it's, true. It's a Gary Coleman show. Oh, he, look, he's dead. <laughs> he's an angel that has to get to heaven, so he has to do all these good deeds. So obviously, in life, he was a terrible person. <laughs> no, that's what I kept thinking, too. I was like, this doesn't seem right. Like, was somebody did somebody hate Gary Coleman that much that they decided to make the cartoon and kill him off? Well, you know, he probably had to have some sort of, like, power of some sort in order mm -hmm. to make it a cartoon. You know, because well, if it was... I, I was mean, super popular. <laughs> right, no, I know that, but if it was just a cartoon with a kid, then why not just have another live-action Gary Coleman show? True. I don't know. So they gotta okay. give him something, some sort of power or something that makes it a reason to, you know, animate it, right? Yeah, but why kill him? I, That's my point. I don't. That's he, has to have power. he has to have the powers of the angels, I guess. I right. Know. I, I couldn't give you that answer, but I, you know, I'm just speculating here. So, yeah, I don't get that one either. That's a good point. The show is just morbid to me. It's always been morbid to me. And then, you, not even just, even discounting the magical powers, stuff that should not have been made into an animated show and yet was, such as uh, Rambo. Right. Uh, the, the Force of Freedom, where he advocated nonviolence. 
wherever possible. Because <laughs> that's, when I when I think of Rambo, I think of you know non violence. Yep. Right. Or uh, RoboCop, where they didn't show all of it, but the intro to the show actually shows Boddicker's gang sneaking up on Murphy and shooting him. And then you know, obviously he you know he fights crime in the cartoon, but it's bloodless. And you think of RoboCop, yeah, that's what I think of. What I want to show my kids. Yeah, that's that's very removed from the source material right there. I don't get and um well I was gonna say something else, but that's more nineties. They had Toxic Crusaders. They oh. toxic, toxic Avenger and yeah, no. No. Now now I just wanna let you guys know what I gave up talking about there is because I wanted to do a rant about Rubik, I gave up talking about Centurions. Oh, Centurions were cool. Centurions I loved. What was their slogan? Was it power to the extreme? Yeah, let's see. Oh, let's... you gotta look it up. Okay, I thought you'd know it off the top of your head. Oh, well, I don't. That was like one of the shows that I would watch if it was on, but I didn't actually seek it out as a kid. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. They had, they had weird names too, like Sky McCloud. Right, 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 right. Air guy. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> one guy had a porn mustache. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Or if it, yeah, if it was like a, any group of people who um, you know were led into battle. Always had like weird ass code names. All right, like, here you go: Max Ray, Max, yeah. Jake Rockwell, mm-hmm. Ace McCloud, yep, Ace McCloud, Rex yep. Charger, and John Thunder. Mm. Well, those are the those were added on later. I just remember the three. Yeah, yeah, Max and Jake and Ace, right? Yeah. And then they had that uh, uh, the person that would kind of beam down, you know, the various things that they needed for that mission. Yep. I don't even remember her name. Uh, Amber. Oh, yeah. All right. And they were against Doc Terror and Hacker. <laughs> Doc Terror. <laughs> Doc Terror. So, yep. there go. there's a lot of good memories right there. Uh, he was a cyborg. Yes. I remember that. If you look at the the cartoon you can see the jack kirby influence on everything oh, oh yeah definitely had that look to it yeah yeah certain cartoons something else i always loved about 80s cartoons well this is a lot like i like cartoons but definitely the 80s apparently america or whoever else just had this super weaponry just lying around that <laughs> we, weren't using, yes. we weren't using to fight the russians no we were using it to fight you know you know the inhumanoids or you know Mayhem from Mask. They had just like, you know, there was no national application of any of this super tech. No, we used it to fight monsters. Uh, so you know what? We actually have a lot of Twitter shoutouts to run through. All right, let's do. At eighties girl two one six says Count Ducula and Hell of yeah. course Scooby Doo. Yep. Well, that was one of like one of the many iterations of Scooby Doo in the eighties. I forget which one it was, but oh yeah, it was the one with um. Well, there was a couple, actually. There was one with just Daphne and Shaggy. Shaggy. Was it with the, the 13, Fred, ghosts, yeah, the 13 ghosts of with, Scooby-Doo, wasn't it that? Yeah, something like that. And then there was like a kid version. Oh, a pup named Scooby-Doo. Like I remember that. Pup named Scooby-Doo, yep. I liked that show. I remember that show, yeah. Oh, my God. Please, let's not stop talk about Scrappy, though. No, 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 yeah, no. no. <laughs> we do not need to bring Scrappy up. no. Not on our show. Thank Rule you. Rule one of Scooby Doo Club. <laughs> you do not talk about script. <laughs> uh, so at J.R. Wells 82, he says, literally way too many to name. He's got real Ghostbusters, there Inspector you. Gadget, yeah. TMNT, yep. Muppet Baby. Muppet Babies. Yep. It barely scratches the surface. It, it, it We really do. Like, it, there was no, we could have done any good choices because everyone would be like, why didn't you pick this? Count Ducula and Danger Mouse, um, they came over from uh, Thames Animation, which is a British studio, and I don't know about you guys, but that was my first exposure to quote-unquote British humor, and I remember loving it, so I think that that set the stage for my love of Monty Python later in life, I don't know. Oh, I think it did definitely for me. <laughs> what, else, what, what, what else did we miss? We get, forgot one of the most important cartoons of the 80s. What's that? La 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> that was at that right time, I guess, to 
discover the Smurfs because I had a lot of Smurfs. <laughs> I have to admit, I had a lot of Smurfs. There was a Smurf for every day of the year. <laughs> yeah, they they were just little plastic blue things. They just stood still. I had a whole shelf full of Smurfs. You ever see that Smurf figure with the with the beer stein in his head? Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, Matt, just Smurf you. <laughs> I will smurf you at the smurf <laughs> next week. You know, we really that's what we should do, you know, if we ever want to talk about something that's, you know, not quite within our eighties reboot, you know, ratings purview. Just uh sub out smurf. <laughs> that's perfect. That'll be our ongoing thing now. That was a smurf a great show, my god. <laughs> that show was on smurf forever. Me. They had a, they had a ton of episodes. Mm. At eighties Music Girl, she mentions the Wuzzles. And she got a little smiley face. We talked to voice actor Brian Cummings. Brian Cummings, yes. Yes. Oh. And, you know, who, of great, course, was Dr. Mindbender, you mm-hmm. know, from G.I. Joe, but also in The Wuzzles. So it was really a fun conversation of trying to understand how somebody could go between being in The Wuzzles and being in G.I. Joe. So um, I definitely recommend going back and listening to that. I think we agreed that we were just participants. <laughs> I just yep. remember being a participant, like, what's going on? Yeah, I just sort of sat back and just held on. <laughs> yeah, Brian was really, he, he he just did everything for that show. I don't even think we had to talk, so. No. no. <laughs> Easiest show we ever did. Yes, it was. I know. So, at X1 Saint X says, Kissy Fur, Transformers, GoBots, Sectors. Go Thundercats, My Pet Monster, He-Man, oh, yeah. Captain N, and the Game Masters oh, so God. much. Yep. Yes. Captain N, the Game Master. <laughs> for the Sec- Sectors. Sector. Is that the one that fought the Cthulhu monsters? Maybe. I have to look that there one was up. A cartoon, there was a cartoon in the 80s where they fought Cthulhu. And it wasn't Ghostbusters, it was something else. What was that like, you know... H.P. Lovecraft's Fun Fair? I don't know. Just... Yes, exactly. It was like <laughs> the, ma- the magical adventures of H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> Something like that. I don't remember, but it was bizarre. Yeah, Sectors had kind of like a bug look to to him, though, right? Uh, so that was kind of there. Yes. Okay. Now I remember. Because I remember <laughs> it, it being tweeted out to us when we were doing the '80s toy episode. Mm. And I remember taking a look at that and going, God, oh, that looks really cool. But I, now I didn't even realize that there was a cartoon. I'm uh, a little jealous of not knowing about that one. At Reasons R is picking Matt's pick, Robotech. There you go. So another shout out there. Uh, at 80s Unleashed is going the Bionic 6 exclamation oh. point. <laughs> they are a family. So did you guys watch that one? Yeah. I- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what I watched about, it. That's like one of those shows where the theme song was more memorable than the show itself. <laughs> bionic, bionic six. six, six ooh, ooh. <laughs> yep. At Hootie Ha Ha has actually got so many to read. Um, let me just barrel through them before we even comment. Uh, so his first tweet says Visionaries, Silverhawks, Mask, Robotech. Vehicle Voltron, Arcade Cartoons, mm-hmm. CBS Saturday Supercade, yep, that was Galaxy that. High, mm-hmm. Rude Dog. Tweet number two says Kid Video, Bell and Sebastian, Danger Mouse, The Little Prince, Fraggle Rock, Banana Man, yep. Transformers, G Force, and Star Blazers. He even goes on so far to say on third tweet. Inspector yeah. Gadget, Dungeons and Dragons, Pac-Man, <laughs> Qbert, Bill and Ted, Back to the Future, Cartoon Addictions, seventies to nineties, too many. I was gonna say, well, <laughs> wait a minute, Back to the Future was something that was in the nineties. He had way too many to talk yeah. about. I mean, this, this, I think this topic uh, deserves a second show because holy Moses, I, if you were a kid in the eighties. You and you were a fan of cartoons you did not want. They might not have been great. They might not have been the best that animation has ever had to offer in America. But if you just wanted like comfort food, pretty much, you got it. Yeah, in exactly. humanoids. In humanoids. In humanoids. Yes. The evil. Remember in humanoids. 
Oh my gosh, he tweeted again. He says, one I can't believe I missed was pole position, considering <laughs> how much I loved video game cartoons. <laughs> oh, how could you miss pole position? <laughs> my God, sir. My God. Uh, way to go, the 80s dude. Where the cars talked. Because pole position needed a plot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a racing game, for God's sake. It didn't need a plot. At 80s Nostalgia says Inspector Gadget was my fave. Mm-hmm. Although a huge fan of real Ghostbusters and He-Man, I own lots of original He-Man animation cells. Wow. Jealous. Wow. Seriously, post those. Yeah. I want to see. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to tweet uh, we'll have to tweet that out and have him uh, get some uh, posting on that. Oh my gosh, how come we nobody brought this one up before? Okay. Um, you're ready for this at CB Nostalgia says Super Friends, Spider Man <laughs> and the Amazing Friends, Spider Man and his Amazing Friends, and Godzilla. Oh, oh Godzilla, Sp- Sp- Spider Man and Amazing Friends. Yeah, this wasn't the best version of Spidey, but I got to tell you, I watched this thing. And uh, they introduced okay. all the extra Marvel guest stars on there, too. Yep. Right, right. And, um, in the comics, uh, they actually, uh, it's sad to say, they actually killed off that iteration of Spidey. There was um, villains that were going through several, several alternate Marvel universes uh, and killing and eating the essence of the alternate Spider-Men there. And they actually went into the alternate, you know, Spider-Man and his amazing friends animated show and killed all of them. <gasps> Not Firestar. Not Firestar, Iceman, and Spider-Man. And, and the little dog was howling mournfully. Aww. <laughs> it's actually kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn it, guys, come on. Guys, got to correct me on the timeline here, but at Tomo England says Hong Kong Fooey. That hmm. was that eighties no, or was that seventies. I want to say yeah, late seventies. It was bright. I mean, it was broadcast all through the eighties, so I can understand the continuity. Yeah. But yeah, that that is that definitely feels more like a product of the of the like the early kung fu craze of the seventies. Also, a, a cartoon with a better theme song than its actual plot. Well, why are you looking at that? At Steve from the nineties says a show that doesn't get talked about much is Spiral Zone. Oh, it, it was great and an intense exclamation point. I remember that show. It was actually pretty dark. Like anywhere that the bad guys made their base, like they controlled most of the world and pretty much turned anyone within their sphere of influence into like mindless zombies. So, and it was like a team of good guys pretty much staving off the rest of the apocalypse pretty much. Wow, that sounds really dark. Yeah. Um, and it had, uh, if I remember correctly, it had a really awesome 80s esque theme too. And yes, Hong Kong Fu was 74. Ooh, okay, we got a flag on the play. <laughs> All right, good, good try though. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely was aired around the. Uh, you know, we saw it. You know, right? And, you know, during the uh, 80s, 80s. Yeah. Oh, that was like one of those cartoons yeah. that was just on like on a loop when they needed space. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Enjoy private eye. <laughs> God. Oh dear. All right. So at Urza Rage, uh, that's U R Z A S Rage says Inspector Gadget, GI Joe, Transformers, Thundercats, Mask, Silverhawks, Gummy Bears, He Man, Ducktales, Rescue mm-hmm. Rangers, and D and D. Yep. Dungeons, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, I would, because even for first edition, that was some pretty weak tea. <laughs> <laughs> there, could have been more to that, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, rather than being just a bunch of kids, you know, it, there, there could have been kind of more of a, uh, a stronger presence of heroes, you know, yep. that were involved in yeah. that. Or, um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons monsters, was, like anything from the Monster Manual, anything at all. Right, right. But, uh, I mean, I know that, you know, that was their first version of trying to get Dungeons and Dragons to the regular media, you know, trying mm-hmm. to break into something outside yeah. of just the game itself. And I think that was really the only thing Gary Gygax could get going, because I know they wanted to do a movie. 
Yeah. Right. I know that was kind of the game plan, but that was the only thing that they could get taken off, and I'm sure they probably need to water it down, yeah. you know, for it to be more acceptable. So I'm yeah. thinking that's kind of the reason why that was like that. But yeah, I, I looking back on it, yeah, if, the, if it would have been more of a He-Man cast of characters or Thundercats type yeah. of characters, then yeah, there could have been more longevity into it. Although it does give it an interesting glimpse, especially to the early bits of D&D, like the, the classes that each character was. Like, they would eventually merge certain classes. Like, they're nerd alert, but like in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and D&D Second Edition, there was no Cavalier. They merged that, I think, in with uh, in with one of the other classes. Yeah, well, the, the, the class I always played yeah. was a druid. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that that was my character. I also my, like My player character. I love that the, kid, the, the wizard kid always had, like, some item that he could just conjure up randomly. Didn't need to rest. Well, he just brought it. Yeah, he just tr- pulled it out of his hat, didn't he? Yep. Didn't need to rest for two hours afterwards, no. Well, welcome to the 80s, man. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's, uh, you know, 18101, you know? <laughs> Anything that they need, they're going to get locked into a storage cabinet that has, you know, <laughs> you know exactly what they what need I to just... build. You know, I and, just thought it was funny that everybody that was involved in the cartoon, none of those people would be playing except for the one kid. <laughs> was the wizard. <laughs> like they had the football jock and yep. the gymnast. Gym, yep. <laughs> like the coward. The, the, the utter coward who, whose magic item was a shield. <laughs> like none of these people are going to play D&D. Come on. <laughs> no. No. Freaking... <laughs> Like and when I think of you know dungeon masters, I think of you know my friend Chuck. Hey Chuck, I don't think of like the little Doby guy. <laughs> the dungeon master, <laughs> screw you! <laughs> You're not the dungeon master. I know the dungeon master. His name is Ron, and I go to his house. I just you thought ate of him. So... <laughs> the kids just go along for with, with it. Like yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, that's, and like, that's something else, like, the Dungeon Master has really no intention of sending them home until they defeat Venger. No. He's telling me the entirety of that fantasy world. There is nothing. No one. They just, they just go along with it. Like, yep. uh, don't you guys have families? <laughs> you know, school? Anything? Yeah. Nobody cared. No. <laughs> no. This is true. Everybody loses track of time playing real D&D. Uh, so those are all my Twitter shout-outs. Do you guys have anything else that you want to mention? Well, nobody, nobody mentioned Jim. <laughs> nope. Nobody mentioned Jim. And, and there's probably a good reason for that. Yeah. the That was the first, I guess the movie, the live-action movie, was one of the first movies in a very, very long time to get yanked from theaters for underperformance. Oh, that... Yeah, that had to hurt. That that you know, just even from you know, I I'm not a gem fan. I only knew a few people that could actually say without a shadow of a doubt that they're gem fans. And even I'm kind of feeling pain, like oh, that's unfair. They didn't even get like GI Joe numbers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even get it up for like an El Cheapo sequel, though. They got nothing. Yeah, that 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 Jones. really hurt. The cartoon was on for a while. Yeah. Like a couple of years. Yeah. And it was probably better written than the movie was, too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> that had, it had a weird premise to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, it had some creepy AI thing. Synergy. Synergy, Synergy. Yeah. yeah. And that was, a, that was a, what I thought was funny about the live-action movie, and I think I mentioned this when we talked about this in the other podcast, but uh, they all look very 80s. Uh, you know, as the characters did, but the movie's not set in the eighties, right? They're like eighties punk kids, and the movie is nothing is set in the modern day. So, well, there you go. So, so I know that everyone likes to pick on me because I'm usually picking the girl movies during our movie review, and I'm always, you know, like like one of the previous episodes, I, I you know, I even brought up Xanadu and Little Mermaid. So I'm always bringing up these really touchy feely things. But if anybody pays attention. Listen to Nick. He's talking about Teddy Ruxpin. Hey, He's hey, hey, about hey, Jim. hey, 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 okay, you know, okay, 
<laughs> you can call me out on maybe he's a little more advanced gem knowledge. You can, I'll, I'll own that. I will own that. I, as I said, I grew up with it. I went for the girls. But I will not, not hear a word against my lord and master, Teddy Ruxpin. Do, <laughs> lord and master. <laughs> that, oh, no, man. That was like one of the few things I owned as a kid that really skirted the Ed Caddy Valley that didn't scare the hell out of me. For whatever reason, I hated everything else that like blinked and talked, but Teddy Ruxpin, that was my jam. <laughs> that after, was your jam. Even after the tapes wore out and he started talking a lot of where any normal <laughs> kid would have been shrieking his head up and running. Uh, that, I still loved him, man. Oh, good old Teddy. All right, gentlemen, I actually need to wrap this up, so let me get your parting thoughts for uh, 80s cartoons. So, Matt, what do you got? It was a magical buy now time. Bought a lot of toys because of those cartoons. <laughs> or did you buy the cart- uh, buy the toys first and then the cartoons came after? Probably both. <laughs> yeah, probably both. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, that was the last decade where they were legally allowed to av- advertise the toys for a show during the show. After a few years, the FCC put a stop to that, but... Yeah. For a while, you could like watch ads for the He-Man action figures during He-Man. So, all right. So, Nick, you got any parting thoughts? Well, building on that, um, a common phrase we're all familiar with: each sold separately, batteries not included. Your parents put it together. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Well, there's some music Oops. going on there. Yeah, I was watching the, the Inhumanoids. <laughs> <laughs> They 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 fight they fight Cthulhu for God's yeah. sakes. <laughs> yeah, what was that guy's name? Yeah. The tentacle ones. But yeah. All right. So my parting thought is, you know, if you're going to put a cartoon together, put it together with a you know a knight that turns you know into a hologram animal. But if you're going to put together a cartoon where it's a puzzle that has to be you know put together, no, bad. Don't do it. No. So, yeah, please don't do it. How do people get a hold of you on social media, Nick? Um, I am on Twitter. My handle is Wheel I Am Crow. Uh, you will probably you see me getting uh, tagged on a lot of Ease Reboot posts. So if uh, you want to say hey, here I am. Very cool, Matt. Well, I'm on Twitter at Matt McLean seventy three. And I am Dave. I take care of our eighties reboot account. So that's at eighties reboot. Of course, don't forget to find us on 80sreboot.tumblr.com, facebook.com slash 80sreboot, and if you ever get a chance to email us, we're at 80sreboot at gmail.com. So a lot of ways to get a hold of us and follow us and see what we're up to. So thank you for reliving the 80s with us and helping us get like all kind of nostalgic as we got on our G.I. Joe jam. Yeah, now I'm just gonna put like my you know footy pajamas on and uh, you know put on some Danger Mouse and see where the night takes me. Oh, there you go, Danger Mouse. Good way to end. You know, there's a new Danger Mouse cartoon coming. Netflix Uh-oh. is bringing it back. Uh-oh. Oh, sweetness. Oh, well, they tried to do that Inspector Gadget. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I um, that was. A... <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> That's not Don Adams. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we, we've got to end this with uh, have a Smurfy good night. Smurf you. <laughs> <laughs> good night, guys. Good night. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s.